What's up guys? Welcome to our ABG study guide. In this video, we're going to go through a ton of practice questions and definitions all about arterial blood gases. Are you ready? Let's go! Number one, what are the causes of respiratory acidosis? Some of the causes include the buildup of CO2 in the blood, hypoventilation, and increased dead space. Number two, how can you correct respiratory acidosis? You can increase the number of breaths per minute, increase the size of the breaths, or decrease dead space. Number three, what are the causes of respiratory alkalosis? The causes include a low amount of CO2 in the blood, hyperventilation, pain, and anxiety. Number four, how can you correct respiratory alkalosis? You can decrease the number of breaths per minute, give medication for pain, and treat the anxiety. Number five, what are the causes of metabolic acidosis? The causes include a low amount of bicarb in the blood, diarrhea, aspirin toxicity, diabetes, and renal failure. Number six, how can you correct metabolic acidosis? You can correct metabolic acidosis by stopping or correcting whatever is causing the issue. You can also provide medication for diarrhea and treat the renal failure. Number seven, what are the causes of metabolic alkalosis? The causes include an increase in bicarb in the blood, vomiting, NG suctioning, and the ingestion of sodium bicarb. Number eight, how can you correct metabolic alkalosis? You can correct it by stopping or correcting the vomiting, discontinue NG suctioning, and stop sodium bicarb ingestion. Number nine, what is oxygenation? Oxygenation is represented by the PaO2 values and it is measured only of the oxygen dissolved in plasma. Number 10. What is the first step before doing an ABG? The first step is to check the patient's chart to confirm the doctor's order. Number 11. What is the preferred site for an ABG in adults? The radial artery is the preferred site. Number 12. What is the longest time an ABG sample would go without ice, without being analyzed? The answer is 15 minutes. Number 13. What test is performed to confirm collateral circulation before doing an ABG stick? The answer is the modified Allen test. Number 14. What is an adequate amount of blood for an ABG sample? 2 to 4 milliliters of blood is enough for the sample. Number 15. What are some causes of metabolic acidosis? Some causes include diarrhea, starvation, and diabetic ketoacidosis. Number 16. What are the three major hazards of an arterial puncture? The three major hazards include bleeding, obstruction of the vessel, and infection. Number 17. What are the three major criteria for the selection of the arterial puncture site? collateral blood flow, vessel accessibility, and peripheral structures. 
Number 18. What is collateral blood flow? Collateral blood flow helps to prevent loss of distal blood flow in the event of an arterial obstruction. Number 19. What does vessel accessibility mean? The best vessel for an arterial puncture is one that is easy to palpate, relatively superficial, and somewhat stable. Number 20. What are peripheral structures? Peripheral structures are referring to something that is easy to get to. In this case, we're referring to the radial artery in regards to sticking an ABG. Number 21. How to perform the modified Allen test. To perform this test, you need to elevate the patient's hand and make a fist for 20 seconds. Hold firm pressure against the radial and ulnar arteries. The patient then opens the hand and it should blanch white. The examiner releases only the ulnar compression and you should see the hand pinken up, which indicates that collateral circulation is present. Number 22. What are alternative methods of assessing for collateral circulation? Some other methods include Doppler ultrasound and pulse oximetry. Number 23. What would you look at if you wanted to determine the oxygenation status of a patient? You would look at their PaO2. Number 24. An increase in CO2 causes the pH levels to become what? The pH becomes acidic. Number 25. A patient comes in with a pH of 7.52, a PaCO2 of 25, a bicarb of 25, and a base excess of plus 1. What would the interpretation of this blood gas be? The interpretation is respiratory alkalosis. Number 26. A patient has the following ABG results. A pH of 7.1, a PaCO2 of 20, a bicarb of 10, and a base excess of negative 20. What is your interpretation of this ABG? The interpretation is metabolic acidosis. Number 27. What do you look at in a blood gas to determine ventilation? You would look at the PaCO2. Number 28. Can a blood gas be considered normal if the base excess is not within the normal limits? No. Everything must be within normal limits for the blood gas to be considered normal. Number 29. If you get a gas and the pH is within normal range and the CO2 and bicarb are moving in the same direction, how would you first classify the gas? It can be classified as being fully compensated. Number 30. If you get an ABG and it reads pH is 7.56, CO2 is 42, bicarb is 34, and base excess is plus 5, how would you interpret this gas? The interpretation of this ABG is acute or uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. Number 31. At what pH should we intubate the patient? We would generally want to intubate at a pH of 7.2 or below. Number 32. Severe hypoxemia is classified as a PaO2 of less than what? The answer is less than 40. Number 33. What is a normal range for PaO2 on room air? The normal range is 80 to 100. Number 34. What is the range of moderate hypoxemia? 
Moderate hypoxemia is the range of 40 to 59. Number 35. You collect an ABG and it reads pH is 7.42, CO2 is 43, bicarb is 25, and base excess is plus 2. How would you classify this gas? This is a normal ABG. Number 36. If the pH decreases below 7.35, then it is considered to be what? This level is acidotic. Number 37. If the pH is above 7.45, it is considered to be what? This level is alkalotic. Number 38. If the patient is hypoventilating, their CO2 will do what? Their CO2 will increase. Number 39. If the patient is hyperventilating, their CO2 would do what? Their CO2 would decrease. Number 40. What are the drugs that can cause a low pH? Narcotics, barbiturates, acetozolamide, ammonium chloride, and peraldehyde. Number 41. What are the drugs that can cause an elevated pH? Sodium bicarbonate, sodium oxalate, and potassium oxalate. Number 42. The primary goal of acid-base homeostasis is to maintain what? To maintain a normal pH. Number 43. What are some potential causes of respiratory alkalosis? The potential causes are anxiety, hypoxemia, and pain. Number 44. Which organ system maintains the normal level of bicarb at 24 milliequivalents per liter? The answer is the renal system. Number 45. What is the limiting factor for hydrogen excretion in the renal tubules? The answer is insufficient buffers. Number 46. What acts as the first line or immediate defense against the accumulation of hydrogen ions? The answer is blood buffer systems. Number 47. A primary respiratory problem is determined by what? It is determined if the PaCO2 is less than 35 or greater than 45. Number 48. When does a primary metabolic problem occur? It occurs when the bicarb is less than 22 or greater than 26. Number 49. If a patient has a pH of 7.49, what would this define? This would define alkalosis. Number 50. What are the common sites for a transcutaneous blood gas electrode? The chest, the abdomen, and lower back. Number 51. What are the sites used for arterial blood sampling by percutaneous needle puncture? The sites include the femoral, radial, and brachial arteries. Number 52. Before a sample of capillary blood is taken, what should you do to the site? You should warm the site to 42 degrees Celsius and clean it with an antiseptic solution. Number 53. A mechanically ventilated patient exhibits a sudden decrease in in tidal CO2 levels. What are possible causes of this change? 
The possible causes include a massive pulmonary embolism, disconnection of the ventilator, and a sudden drop in cardiac output. Number 54. Factors to determine the volume need for an arterial blood sample include the ABG analyzer's requirements, specific anticoagulants used, and the other tests that will be done. Number 55. After obtaining an arterial blood sample, what should you do? You should apply pressure to this site until bleeding stops, then place the sample in a transport container with an ice slush, then mix the sample by rolling and inverting the syringe. Number 56. When is transcutaneous blood gas monitoring indicated? It is indicated when the need to continuously analyze gas exchange in infants and children, to quantify the real-time responses to bedside interventions, and to continuously monitor for hypoxia in newborn infants. Number 57. What size needle would you recommend to obtain an ABG sample on an infant? You would recommend a size 25 gauge needle for an infant. Number 58. What are the indications for arterial blood sampling by percutaneous needle puncture? To monitor the severity of a disease process, evaluate ventilation and acid base status and evaluate a patient's response to therapy. Number 59. After obtaining an arterial blood sample from an arterial line, what should you do? You should flush the line and stopcock with heparinized intravenous solution. Confirm that the stopcock port is open to the intravenous bag solution and catheter, and then confirm an undamped pulse pressure waveform on the monitor. Number 60. What patient parameters should be assessed as a part of arterial blood sampling? The temperature, position and activity level, and clinical appearance should all be assessed. Number 61. What are the clinical signs of acute respiratory alkalosis? The signs of acute respiratory alkalosis include convulsions, dizziness, and paresthesia. Number 62. A low PaCO2 best describes what? It best describes respiratory alkalosis. Number 63. With partially compensated respiratory alkalosis, which of the following blood gas abnormalities would you expect to encounter? You would expect a decreased bicarb, decreased PCO2, and increased pH. Number 64. What are the causes of respiratory acidosis in patients with normal lungs? Neuromuscular disorders, spinal cord trauma, anesthesia, and central nervous system depression. Number 65. Before connecting the sample syringe to an adult arterial line stopcock, what should you do? You should first aspirate at least 5 milliliters of fluid or blood using a wasted syringe. Number 66. What is the equipment needed for capillary blood sampling? For capillary blood sampling, you need a lancet, capillary tubes, and a warming pad. Number 67. When is capillary blood gas sampling indicated? It is indicated when an ABG analysis is needed but arterial access is not available. Number 68. The compensation for metabolic acidosis occurs through what? It occurs through a decrease in blood CO2 levels. Number 69. What are the causes of metabolic alkalosis? 
The causes of metabolic alkalosis include diuretics, hypochloremia, and vomiting. Number 70. What clinical findings would you expect in a fully compensated respiratory acidosis patient? You would expect an elevated bicarb and a pH between 7.35 and 7.39. Number 71. What is the normal pH range? The normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Number 72. What is the normal range for carbon dioxide? The normal range for PaCO2 is 35 to 45. Number 73. What is the normal range for bicarb? The normal range for bicarb is 22 to 26. Number 74. What is the normal range for base excess? The normal range for base excess is negative 2 to positive 2. Number 75. What type of issues are we looking for when we look at the bicarb and base excess values? Looking at these values means that we're looking for metabolic issues. Number 76. What type of issues are we looking for when we look at the PaCO2 values? This would mean that we are looking for the patient's ventilation status. Number 77. What does the PaO2 measure? It measures oxygenation status. Number 78. What range of PaO2 is considered normal on room air? A PaO2 of 80 to 100 is considered normal on room air. Number 79. What ABG value would we look for in patients that currently smoke or have smoked heavily in the past? We would want to look at the percentage of methemoglobin. Number 80. What ABG value would we look for in patients that have a carbon monoxide poisoning or have been in a fire? We would want to look at the percentage of carboxyhemoglobin. Number 81. In a given ABG, if the pH and CO2 values are going in different directions, what is this ABG considered to be? In this case, we would know that the ABG issue is respiratory related. Number 82. In a given ABG, if the pH and bicarb values are going in the same direction, what is this ABG considered to be? In this case, we would know that the ABG issue is metabolic related. Number 83. When interpreting a given ABG, what values must be abnormal for it to be considered partial? For it to be considered partial, all values must be abnormal. Number 84. When interpreting a given ABG, what values must be normal for it to be considered uncompensated? For it to be considered uncompensated, either the CO2 or the HCO3 must be normal. Number 85. When interpreting a given ABG, what value must be normal for it to be considered compensated? For it to be considered compensated, the pH must be normal. Number 86. How do you prevent pre-analytic errors in ABG samples? To prevent pre-analytic errors, make sure the sample is obtained anaerobically, properly anticoagulated, bubbles removed, and analyzed as quickly as possible. Number 87. How is the CO2 transported? 
The answer is 45 to 55 milliliters of CO2 per one deciliter of blood is transported by either ionized bicarb dissolved in plasma or plasma protein transport. Number 88. How much blood is needed for an adequate ABG sample? 2 to 4 milliliters of blood is enough for a sample. Number 89. For accurate ABG results, what are the components of quality control? The components are record keeping, performance validation, preventative maintenance and function checks, automated calibration and verification, internal statistical quality control, and external quality control. Number 90. What are the reasons for drawing an ABG? The reasons for drawing an ABG are sudden unexplained dyspnea, acute shortness of breath or tachypnea, abnormal breath sounds, cyanosis, heavy use of accessory muscles, changes in ventilator settings, CPR, diffuse infiltrates in the chest x-ray, sudden cardiac arrhythmias, and acute hypotension. Number 91. What does the blood gas machine accurately depend on? It depends on accurately measuring barometric pressure, properly calibrating machine running measurements against known values, maintaining electrodes, and running quality control procedures. Number 92. Inadequate warming and squeezing of the puncture site does what? Squeezing the puncture site may result in venous and lymphatic contamination of the sample. Number 93. What are secondary values to ABGs that need to be calculated? The secondary values include bicarbonate or HCO3, base excess, and hemoglobin saturation. Number 94. What are the benefits of indwelling catheters? Indwelling catheters can provide ready access for blood sampling. Also, they allow for continuous monitoring of vascular pressures. Number 95. What are the site locations for indwelling catheters? The normal routes are the peripheral arteries, the femoral artery, the central vein, and the pulmonary arteries. Number 96. What can a good capillary blood gas sample provide and reflect? It can provide the estimated arterial oxygenation and PCO2. Number 97. What can be used if frequent blood sampling is needed? The answer is arterial cannulation. Number 98. What is hemozymetry? Is the laboratory analytical procedure of monitoring hemoglobin and oxygen saturation that requires invasive sampling of arterial blood. Number 99. What determines the ventilation status of a patient? The PaCO2 determines the patient's ventilatory status. Number 100. What is the rule of thumb in regards to the PaCO2 and FiO2? The PaCO2 should be about five times the FiO2. Number 101. Does oxygenation decrease with age? Yes, oxygenation does decrease with age. Number 102. What happens when an ABG is partially compensated? In this case, the pH is out of range and the CO2 and bicarb are going in the same direction. Number 104. What is the normal value for carboxyhemoglobin? The normal value is less than 3%.
Number 105. What does the carboxyhemoglobin indicate? When carboxyhemoglobin is present, it indicates that the patient was exposed to carbon monoxide or a house fire. Number 106. What is the normal value for methemoglobin? The normal value for methemoglobin is less than 2%. Number 107. What does the methemoglobin indicate? It indicates if the patient is a smoker or not. Number 108. Why do we analyze ABGs? ABG analysis gives important information to assist in the clinical management of patients with respiratory and metabolic problems. Number 109. What does the pH represent? The pH represents a measurement of the overall acid-base balance and is used to assess the overall status of the blood. Number 110. What does the PaCO2 represent? The PaCO2 represents the arterial carbon dioxide level and is used to assess the patient's ventilatory status. Number 111. What does the PaO2 represent? The PaO2 represents the oxygen tension level in the arterial blood and is used to evaluate the patient's oxygenation status. Number 112. What does the HCO3 represent? The HCO3 represents the bicarbonate levels, which is an important buffer in the blood. It is used to evaluate the metabolic aspect of acid-base balance. Number 113. What does BE represent? BE represents the base excess level of the blood and is used to indicate the metabolic aspect of acid-base balance. Number 114. What does the SAO2 represent? The SAO2 represents the level of saturation with hemoglobin with oxygen and also provides a measure of arterial oxygenation. Number 115. What is compensation? Compensation is the altering of function of the respiratory or metabolic system in an attempt to correct for an acid-base disorder. Number 116. What is hypoxemia? Hypoxemia means that there are low levels of oxygen in the blood. Number 117. What is the relationship between minute ventilation and ABG interpretation? As the minute ventilation increases, the PaCO2 will decrease and pH will increase. This is alkalosis. As the minute ventilation decreases, the PaCO2 will increase and the pH will decrease. This is acidosis. Number 118. What are the ABG indications? The indications for an ABG include to monitor ABG values, to evaluate response to therapeutic or diagnostic procedures, and to monitor disease progression or severity. Number 119. Describe the femoral artery in regards to an ABG stick. The femoral artery is a very large artery. It is a risky stick because of the surrounding veins and arteries. Number 120. Describe the radial artery in regards to an ABG stick. The radial artery is the preferred site to stick an ABG. It has good collateral circulation, it is superficial, and easy to palpate, which is why it usually is the best artery for sticking. Also, it's not near any large veins, and the stick is relatively pain-free. But, I mean, you won't see me volunteering to have my radial artery stuck anytime soon. Number 120. 
Describe the brachial artery in regards to an ABG stick. The brachial artery is a risky stick because it is near nerves and large veins. Also, there is no collateral circulation with this stick, and there is an increased risk for accidentally obtaining a venous sample. Number 122. What are the contraindications for an ABG stick? The contraindications include the patient has blood clotting problems, the patient has a local infection or damage at the injection site, the patient is on anticoagulation therapy, the patient is taking thrombolytic agents, the patient has a disease affecting the blood vessels, and the patient has arteriovenous fistules or vascular grafts. Number 123. What are the indications for an arterial line? The indications for an arterial line include continuous arterial blood pressure monitoring and or the need for repeated ABGs. Number 124. The capillary blood gas is an alternative to what? A capillary blood gas is sometimes an alternative to the ABG procedure. Number 125. The capillary blood gas gives what in regards to an arterial blood gas? It gives a rough estimate of the pH and the PaCO2. However, the PO2 is of no value for estimating oxygenation because venous blood does not carry oxygen. Number 126. How is the ABG procedure done? An ABG is done by sticking an artery with a syringe in order to collect a sample of arterial blood. Number 127. What are some hazards of an ABG? The hazards include infection, bleeding, and obstruction of the vessel. Number 128. What are the sites for a capillary blood gas? The sites include the heel of the foot, fingertip, and earlobe. Number 129. ABG samples provide what? They provide precise measurements of acid-base balance and the lung's ability to oxygenate the blood and remove carbon dioxide. Number 130. An accurate interpretation of an ABG requires what? It requires knowledge of the patient's total clinical picture, including any treatment that they are receiving. Number 131. Where are mixed venous blood samples drawn? They are drawn from the right arterium or from the pulmonary artery. Number 132. What is a mixed venous blood sample used for? It is used to evaluate the overall tissue oxygenation. Number 133. Prior to an ABG draw, what should the respiratory therapist review in the patient's chart? The RT should look for a low platelet count or increased bleeding time. Number 134. What must be evaluated prior to a radial stick? You should check for collateral circulation of the hand via the modified Allen's test. Number 135. How is the modified Allen's test performed? Have the patient make a tight fist. Then the respiratory therapist compresses both the radial and ulnar arteries, then instructs the patient to open their hand and relax. The respiratory therapist then releases the ulnar artery to check and see if the hand turns pink. If so, this indicates good collateral circulation because blood is flowing back into the hand through the ulnar artery. Number 136. What is a positive modified Allen's test? For a positive modified Allen's test, the hand turns pink within 10 to 15 seconds after you release the ulnar artery. This means circulation is adequate for the puncture site. 
Number 137. What should the respiratory therapist do if the modified Allen test is negative? In this case, the RT should try the other arm. If it's negative as well, you can then try the brachial artery. Number 138. What should the respiratory therapist do for a patient who needs frequent ABGs? In this case, they should recommend the insertion of an indwelling arterial catheter. Number 139. What do bubbles in the ABG sample do? Bubbles in the sample can cause the oxygen reading in the results to read inaccurately. Number 140. How should the respiratory therapist handle an ABG sample after it has been drawn? They should remove any air bubbles, store in ice water to stop metabolism, and analyze as soon as possible. Number 141. Room temperature samples must be analyzed how soon? Room temperature samples must be analyzed within 10 to 15 minutes. Number 142. How long should pressure be applied to a stick wound? Pressure should be applied for at least 3 to 5 minutes or longer if the patient has a clotting problem. Number 143. What is the kidney's role in acid-base balance? The kidney's role is to remove small quantities of acid and restore the buffer capacity of fluids by replenishing bicarb. Number 144. What is the description of base excess values? A positive value indicates either a base has been added or a buffer removed. The larger the number, the more severe the metabolic component. Number 145. What is the importance of base excess? Base excess allows for the analysis of pure metabolic components of acid-base balance. Changes in metabolic components alter acid-base, whereas respiratory components do not. Number 146. Do changes in CO2 affect the base excess? No, only metabolic changes alter the base excess. Number 147. What are the common causes of respiratory acidosis? Acute upper airway obstruction, severe diffuse airway obstruction, and massive pulmonary edema. Number 148. What are the common non-respiratory problems that can cause respiratory acidosis? A drug overdose, spinal cord injury, neuromuscular diseases, head trauma, and trauma to thoracic cage. Number 149. How can you describe fully compensated respiratory acidosis? There is enough bicarb to bring the pH within the normal range. Number 150. If the expected level of bicarb compensation is not occurring for acute or chronic acidosis, what should the respiratory therapist suspect? In this case, the respiratory therapist should suspect that a complicating metabolic disorder is also present. Number 151. In acute respiratory acidosis, how high does the CO2 have to get for the patient to reach a comatose state? Once the CO2 levels reach 70, the patient may lose consciousness. Number 152. Because CO2 causes systemic vasodilation, what cardiac manifestations should be expected? Warm, flush skin, a pounding pulse, and arrhythmias should be expected in this case. Number 153. How do you identify respiratory alkalosis in an ABG? The PaCO2 is below the expected level, indicating that the ventilation is exceeding the normal level. 
Number 154. What are the common causes of respiratory alkalosis? The common causes include hyperventilation caused by pain, hypoxemia, and anxiety. Number 155. How do the kidneys compensate for respiratory alkalosis? The answer is, they excrete bicarb. Number 156. What are the clinical signs and symptoms associated with respiratory alkalosis? Tachypnea, dizziness, sweating, tingling in fingers and toes, muscle weakness, and spasms. Number 157. When does a respiratory therapist need to be cautious not to induce respiratory alkalosis? The RT needs to be especially cautious during IPPB and mechanical ventilation. Number 158. How does the body compensate for metabolic acidosis? It compensates with hyperventilation. Number 159. What is the most common and obvious sign of metabolic acidosis? Kussmaul's breathing. Number 160. What are the most common causes of metabolic alkalosis? Hyperkalemia, hypochloremia, NG suctioning, vomiting, post-hypercapnic disorders, diuretics, steroids, or too much bicarb. Number 161. How does the body compensate for metabolic alkalosis? Hypoventilation to retain carbon dioxide. Number 162. What do ABG results determine? They are used to determine the oxygen level, acid-base balance, and are very useful in the management of mechanical ventilation. Number 163. What does the pH measure? The pH measures the state of the blood, either acidic or basic. Number 164. What does the PaCO2 measure? The PaCO2 measures the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. Number 165. What does the PaO2 measure? The PaO2 measures the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Number 166. What does the HCO3 measure? The HCO3 measures the concentration of bicarbonate in the blood. Number 167. What three ways do we classify an ABG? The ABG is either normal, acidosis, or alkalosis. What two types do we classify as the primary problem of an ABG? The ABG problem is either respiratory related or metabolic related. Number 169. Which of the parameters is the respiratory component? The PaCO2 is the respiratory component. Number 170. Which of the parameters is the metabolic component? The bicarb is the metabolic component. Number 170. What happens to the pH when there is an increase in hydrogen ions? In this case, the pH will decrease and become more acidotic. Number 170. What happens to the pH when there is a decrease in hydrogen ions? In this case, the pH will increase and become alkalotic. Number 173. Under what range of the pH will a patient have to be intubated? 
the patient will need to be intubated when their pH is less than 7.2. Number 174. If the pH and PaCO2 are going in opposite directions, what does this indicate? This indicates that there is a respiratory problem. Number 175. If the pH and bicarb are going in the same direction, what does this indicate? This indicates that there is a metabolic problem. Number 176. What type of compensation is indicated when the pH, PaCO2, and bicarb are all out of range? This indicates that the ABG is partially compensated. Number 178. What type of compensation is indicated when the pH is normal and the PaCO2 and bicarb are both out of range? This indicates that the ABG is fully compensated. Number 179. What does the SAO2 measure? It measures the percentage of oxygen saturation of arterial blood. Number 180. What two things are used to determine the accurate percentage of the methemoglobin and the carboxyhemoglobin? An ABG analyzer and a co-oximeter are used. Number 181. What is the most important value to examine when looking at an ABG? The most important value to examine is the patient's ventilation and oxygenation. Number 182. How is ventilation measured? Ventilation is measured by looking at the PaCO2 levels. Number 183. How is oxygenation measured? Oxygenation is measured by looking at the PaO2 levels. Number 184. What two electrochemical oxygen analyzers are good for basic FiO2 monitoring? The Clark electrode and the galvanic cell. Number 185. Where can blood gas samples be taken from? Blood gas samples can be taken from peripheral arteries, indwelling catheters, or via capillary sampling. Number 186. What is considered the gold standard of gas exchange analysis? Of course, an ABG. Number 187. Why is the radial artery the preferred site for arterial blood sampling? Because it is near the surface, it is easy to palpate and stabilize, the ulnar artery gives good collateral circulation, it is not near any large veins, and the stick is quote-unquote relatively pain-free. Number 188. What are the indications for ABGs? The indications for an ABG include the need to evaluate ventilation, acid base, oxygenation, status and oxygen carrying capacity of blood, the need to assess the patient's response to therapy and or diagnostic tests, and the need to monitor the severity and progression of a documented disease process. Number 189. Blood errors in a sample can be caused by what? They can be caused by air in the sample, venous admixture, excess anticoagulant, and metabolic effects. Number 190. The ABG sample should be analyzed within how many minutes? It should be analyzed within 15 minutes. Number 191. What are some hazards and complications of ABGs? Bleeding, hematoma, infection, air or blood embolism, arterial spasm, occlusion, vessel damage, 
ischemia distal to the sample site, and necrosis. Number 192. What do you want to obtain for a patient who just survived a house fire? In this case, you will want to get an ABG to check for carbon monoxide and be sure to run the blood through a co-oximeter. Number 193. What are the four main values you look at while trying to name a disorder based off the results of an ABG? You will want to look at, of course, the pH, PaCO2, bicarb, and base excess. Number 194. What are the normal results for a modified Allen test? The hand color should flush or turn pink within 5 to 7 seconds. Number 195. What are some alternative methods for checking for collateral blood flow? Use a Doppler ultrasound or a pulse oximeter. Number 196. What should you label on the syringe of an ABG sample? You should label the date, time, patient name, oxygen percentage, temperature, and your initials. Number 197. What should you document in the chart after obtaining an ABG? You should document the date, time, puncture information, and verify that you sent the sample to the lab. Number 198. What does blood gas analyzer directly measure? It directly measures the pH, PaCO2, and the PaO2. Number 199. What does a blood gas analyzer indirectly measure? It indirectly measures the bicarb and oxygen saturation. This is done by calculating from the direct measurements. And finally, our last practice question, number 200. What does the co-oximeter measure? It measures the hemoglobin content and values related to hemoglobin binding. These include the SAO2, carboxyhemoglobin levels, and the methemoglobin levels. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy, my friend. Thank you.